Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on the big book of loom knitting brought to you by Leisure Arts. Thank you so much, Leisure Arts. The patterns are by Kathy Norris, and you can pick up your copy at the link below. We are going to be doing a loom along, but we're going to be teaching you how to read a pattern, and we will be working on this pattern here. We'll be working on the hooded wrap. So this hooded wrap is um, a beautiful, fun wrap. You can actually make it a little bit longer if you want to make it more of a cape design. And we can talk about that. Um, but you can actually make it a little bit longer or keep it the length that it is. It's a flexible pattern. And see how it just comes just over the shoulders? So it's a nice uh, lightweight hood. Um, like I said, you can make it bigger if you want to. So we want to work on learning how to read a pattern. And this pattern here, um, is going to walk us through on this main page. This is page eight if you're following along in this edition. Uh, this page will tell you obviously the name of the pattern, okay? And then it's also giving you the finished um, measurements. So if you take your own measurements and you say that you need it longer, um, there's a way that you can adjust that. Gives you the total height on here. The, measure, the finished hood measurements are 20 and a half inches, which is 52 centimeters wide. And the total height is 19 inches or 58 and a half centimeters high. Okay, this is an easy pattern. Okay, the materials you're gonna need are a bulky weight yarn, number five, if you're looking for the symbol, which is uh, three and a half ounces, 120 yards, or 100 grams, 110 meters, and that's for the yarn that they had used, and that's per skein. So according to theirs, you're gonna need two skeins. So you're gonna need 240 yards, However, I will tell you that uh, I used 270 yards approximately, and I used uh, just a little bit over two skeins. So I had three skeins. I'll show you what I used. And this yarn is brought to you by uh, Lion Brand. They provided our yarn today. Thank you so much, Lion Brand. This is Lion's Pride Wool Spun, and it is 80% acrylic and 10% uh, wool. And it's also a number five. There's 127 yards in a ball, and I've used, uh, again, three balls. Um, this is actually what's left from my third ball, so I didn't need much, so you can get another project out of this one. Um, the hand on it is really nice, and it lays really well, And but I did need a little bit extra yarn, so keep that in mind. Okay, so moving on. We're going to need the 50 peg straight loom, although you're only going to use 40 pegs. So if you feel like you need something wider, you can cast on a few more, um, a few more stitches, and um, or you can even use the uh, larger loom. This is the loom we're using. Now this is a Nifty Knitter brand, which is no longer made. You can still get them. Uh, this is measured center peg to center peg. Uh, 11 sixteenths of an inch or it's just shy of three quarters of an inch if you're me measuring in inches it's less than two centimeters from peg uh, center peg to center peg so as long as you've got one that will um, give at least um, 40 pegs you could use um, a kiss loom or whatever but we're working a flat panel so we're going around and back and back and forth we're not going across so don't worry about double knitting okay Now we are going to use a um, knitting loom tool, which is your pick, and you're gonna use a crochet hook size K, um, you, or you could use one slightly larger. You just wanna be able to get it in between the loom. And the uh, yarn needle, which is like a tapestry needle or something. Um, I use a, a metal needle. You can use a plastic one, but um, you're using it so much for this one seam that I think that you might enjoy having a metal one. You'll see why later. And it calls for a one inch button. I used one that was probably an inch and a half or so. So um, you might wanna have a couple on hand to see which one you wanna use after you're done. Okay, so the next thing you do when you look at a pattern is you're going to um, look at the gauge and it's in the twisted garter stitch. Those are E-wrap stitches. And uh, you're purling one row and then E-wrapping a knit one row. So you're going back and forth between those. So when you measure your gauge, it's for that part of the pattern. And it's 11 stitches equals four and a quarter inches when you measure going this way, okay, the width. 
and then the height is the row. So in a four inch area, you're going to get 24 rows or 10 centimeters. So the 11 stitches is four and a half inches or 10 and 10.75 millimeters. And the rows are 24 rows is equal to four inches or 10 centimeters. And you can divide that by uh, one to get how many rows per inch. That's in the twisted stock and net stitch. Now I got my gauge correct when I did the part of the pattern here that goes over the shoulder, but I found that I needed some more rows when I was in the twisted knit stitch along this area. So that's why I actually needed some more um, yarn. Okay. You will um, also note that there, it says in the twisted stock and net stitch, it talks about the uh, gauge here. And that's when you do all E wrap and it's 10 stitches and 16 rows for a four inch squared or 10 centimeter squared piece. Okay, now if you did wanna continue this along to be a cape or something something longer, you're definitely gonna need more yarn accordingly. So definitely get three, maybe even four balls if that's what you wanna do. Okay, next when we are reading a pattern, we will look at the techniques used. We've now, got the chain cast on and we'll refer to that on page 78. The E-wrap knit stitch, which is a flat panel knitting, it's going back and forth, and that's on page 83. Purl stitch is on 85. Skip a peg, those are on page 88. We'll go through all of these. And then the chain one bind off is page 92. Now, the chain one cast on and bind off, you will actually use these a couple of times, so you will need that crochet hook. This pattern is worked entirely as a flat panel, and it's seamed at the back to form the hood. So um, let's get started on looking at this pattern. Okay, be sure and um, have something to um, take notes if you want to, if you have the pattern, you can follow along and write what part of the um, video, uh, what timestamp that you want to go back and reference it. So you can just go back to the video and click on that for help. Um, so let's go through this here. So the right side is um, we are looking at this diagram over here to kind of help us. And let's come over here. Now, when you're looking at a pattern um, coming out of the loom, you're gonna wanna go down and see where my uh, double point needle is right here, down here at the bottom. So imagine the loom is my needle. And as I go up, all this, this knitting is gonna appear from the bottom. So we're working on this right side first. So if you are looking at a knitting chart, it's going to do the same. So you're gonna read it starting at the bottom. So the same thing goes for when we, um, when we start knitting. Say if you want this wider, you're gonna cast on a few more stitches here to get your width and get your gauge. If you want the cape to be longer, you're just gonna make this right side longer. See how it knits it at seven inches? This is a dimension line from here to here. So when this is finished and we bind off these stitches here, it will be seven inches. Like I said, if you wanna make it longer, go ahead. But whenever you uh, do that, remember how many ridges you did, how many repeats you did, write them down. And then you're gonna to wanna to knit the same amount over here and make sure you have the same number of ridges over here. It's important to not um, stretch them, but it's actually more important to count the ridges because this side here is going to get seamed against this side here, so they need to match. This one can have a little bit of wiggle room uh, as far as where they line up, but because these are gonna form ridges, which you'll see in the pa uh, pattern, then um, you want them to definitely line up. Now, it's giving us an overall length here, okay? And then the hood is from here to here, which is 24 inches. So if you find that when you knit it to what the pattern states and it stops short, you'll need to knit a longer amount before you get to this left side here, okay? All right, that's just kind of walking you through the overview of it. All right, so the right side, uh, we'll just go ahead and read through all this and then remember that we have a loom along so you can fast forward to the loom along or you can kind of go through this with me now. We're gonna read through the pattern so that you have it. And then if you need to pause and rewind and come back, you can see it more complete here by pausing your video. But definitely get the book if you can. The book is available as a digital or a hard copy uh, purchase. So go ahead and try that out. Okay, so uh, the right side working is flat knitting and beginning on end peg. This is the end peg. 
not this. This is an anchor peg, which we will not use. So this is your end peg. Chain cast on 40 pegs counterclockwise. So we're gonna go this direction, okay? Now, then it goes to the rows. On row one, we're gonna skip and purl across. So when you start seeing something that you don't know how to do, like up here where it says chain cast on, go back to your techniques area and flip over to that page. So we will do that when we work through it. All right, the next one is uh, row two, E-wrap and knit across. Then rows three through 38, repeat rows one and two 18 times. So we'll repeat those 18 times. So this would be 19 if you were counting all the little ridges that will appear. And then this is the 18. Um, sorry, this is one, and then this is 18, so you will have 19 with all of them together. Okay, so this is important why you read through a pattern first before you actually start trying to knit it up in case you need to learn some other skills before you move on or at least familiarize yourself with them. So this row 19 is a buttonhole row, and if you've never created a buttonhole, it's not that scary. Just follow these instructions, okay, and we'll obviously do it together. Skip one, just as you did up here, you're gonna purl one. And then it starts saying some language that might get a little confusing. Uh, it says skip next peg and transfer loop from next loop to skipped peg, okay? So you skip a peg, but then once you skip it, that peg, sorry, you skip a peg, but once you skip it, that name of that peg, they're gonna refer to it as skipped peg because then they start talking about the next peg being quote, the next peg. So Try not to get confused in some of that language there. Um, it can kind of um, kind of stump you for a moment um, instead of looking at peg numbers. Purl this peg, the one that they're talking about after you move it over, by pulling the working yarn up through both loops. So it's confirming that you will have two loops on that, on the peg. Place newly formed stitch on a crochet hook and chain cast on. So we're doing that chain cast on again to the same peg clockwise, because we're going in a different direction now, place loop back on hook um, on next empty peg. And then that makes your buttonhole, and then it says purl across. So it doesn't say purl the peg that you just moved that to, it just means to finish purling the remaining of the row, okay? And then moving on, you're gonna E-wrap knit across for row 40, and then you're gonna repeat those same rows one and two up here. Okay, so that's this section here, that's making this area. Okay, the hood, it's gonna walk you through um, what you need to do for that area and we're gonna end up doing a chain bind off to get this spot, okay? And if you wanna know how long that is, you go up here and it talks about this part, okay? And that's the part that projects in front of the hood. So this is gonna be the front of your hood, this is gonna be the back of the hood. So on the hood, row one, you notice that the row numbers changed. Okay, this is a new technique area. So if they refer to row one in here, you're gonna go up here, not up here. So in patterns, you wanna be careful what you're reading. Chain one, bind off 13 pegs, placing loop from crochet hook onto next peg with loop. Purl this peg by purling the working yarn up through both loops of the peg, okay? So once you bind them off, you end up having an extra loop on your hook and so you'll just place it on um, where you're gonna end and then you actually purl them together. That's all that's saying, okay? And then it says P7, which is purl seven. And then E wrap knit across. I wanna say that because you have to do this, go ahead and get your stitch marker even though it doesn't call for it in your supplies, okay? And then you'll know where to stop and start because you're gonna start working on that part as your band. Then row two, E-wrap knit across, just like we've done before. Row three, skip one, purl seven, and showing that that's your band, and then E-wrap knit across. And then you're just gonna repeat that until the, the qualified times. Okay, so that's the hood, that's this section here. So when you get to the end here, you're gonna wanna measure and see if you're at the right length, which is 24 inches. Okay, and then you move on to the left side, and now we need to um, make it longer again, right? So, or wider, okay, so you stop here. So we're gonna have to add this on. So there's directions in here for this. It says E-wrap knit across, and then place loop from last peg onto crochet hook and chain cast on. So you're casting back on the same way we did in, on the right side, okay? And then place the loop from your hook on the next peg, and then you're back at 40. All right, and then we're gonna skip one, purl across, E-wrap across, and then repeating those until we're done. 
Okay, and then there'll be a chain one bind off that we do, which we had already done before. And then we'll walk you through finishing it. It's just saying using this as a guide, fold it in half on the wrong side together, uh, with the wrong sides together, and um, seam that up, and then add your buttonhole, and you're done. So we're going to go ahead and do this loom along. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure and click to get your copy. And uh, thanks again to Lion Brand for providing the yarn. All right, we're going to start on the right side, work as flat knitting, and beginning on end peg, chain cast on 40 pegs counterclockwise. All right, let's look at that. So we want to chain cast on, and when we look at our beginning of our pattern here, if you don't know what a chain cast on is, they've got it conveniently located in techniques used, and the chain cast on begins on page 58, and it's these figure numbers. So we're going to show you how to do this. Uh, we'll perform that on our own loom, but this lines up exactly what we're going to be doing. It's saying to leave a six inch uh, end, make a slip knot, and do all these steps, which we'll do here. So um, always refer to your book um, on exactly how to use that. The chain cast on method produces a tighter cast on and gives your project a more finished edge than the E-wrap cast on. Leaving a six inch tail uh, or end, make a slip knot, and we're gonna place it on the crochet hook. And I've got a little knot on the end of mine because uh, this yarn uh, can fray a little bit. So if you've got a yarn that does that, go ahead and leave a knot. If not, leave it alone. All right, we're going to take our uh, crochet hook and put it on the slip knot here, tightening it up just a little bit. Put your tail on the inside of the loom, and we're gonna be working from the inside of the loom in a counterclockwise uh, way. And we are going to hold the crochet hook inside here, wrap the working yarn around the beginning peg, which in this case is the end peg. And we are going to pull in this working yarn between the first and the second peg here into the loom. And usually we, we are gonna put it on the inside on a regular round loom and pull through. But on this end peg, it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, so depending upon the way you hold it, um, it might work better for you this way. I'm gonna place it on the outside here, but I'm gonna grab it between the um, first and the last peg, pull that on through, and then now I'm going to loop this through my um, last uh, my slip knot here do you see how that pulled on through there now i can pull it on the inside and easily complete the rest of mine so now i'm going to move on my working strand between my second and third peg and um, i can pull the yarn on the inside and grab it that way and wrap it around and then you're going to pull it through this teardrop shape okay so this loop on your hook becomes a teardrop see that it looks like a teardrop shape so we're going to um, pull this yarn to the inside of the loom, okay? You can wrap it and go through that teardrop shape, okay? There's just a couple of different ways you can do it, whatever you're familiar with. You can pull it on the outside, wrap it, and pull it in. Um, for this way, it's probably gonna be better for me pulling it that way So um, because of my position. So you can pull it out and around and go all the way and you know that it's not gonna slip out and then pull it through the teardrop. So whatever is more comfortable for you, but basically you're gonna go between the pegs and pull it to the inside. And so what happens is you're gonna get two loops on the inside, one loop on the outside, and it creates this chain through here. So you're gonna continue on this method, and when you get to your last peg, you're gonna place it on here like this. So you're gonna go all the way around the loom and then stop on peg 40. So we'll meet back up when we get to peg at 40. So we have counter uh, clockwise casted on our 40 pegs. We're on row one. We're going to skip the first peg and purl across. That means that we are going to skip the first peg by not actually knitting it at all or purling it. And purl across just means that we're going to purl across the entire length of the row until we get to the very last peg. So let's do that right now. I've got my loom on a stand. Uh, it's a loom holder. If you're interested, you can click the link, but just want you to know what it is. So we are going to skip this first peg and we're going to purl peg two, pulling the loop from the bottom, taking it off and putting it back on. So let's do that slow. We're going to 
pull up this loop here, grab the yarn, the working yarn from below, make a new loop, pull it off. You can do it with one step pushing it this way and then pulling down while you set it back on or you can take it completely off with your hand. I'll take it off with my hand this time. So we're going to pull a loop up, so make a loop, take this old loop off, put the new loop on, and then pull on the working strand to tighten it up. All right, we'll do that again. Pull the loop from the bottom, take it off, put the new one on. You're gonna continue all the way around until the very last peg and we'll meet you back over there. Okay, we've come to the end of row one. We're going to row two and we will e-wrap knit across. So we'll wrap all the pegs and then knit over. So on this one, it does not say to skip. So we will wrap that peg and then wrap the next one and go all the way across. Okay, so we've e-wrapped across and then we're going to knit over or work the stitch. So go ahead and work these stitches and I'll meet you back when you're done. Okay, so I have finished going around and my yarn is on this side. You may have your turned around. I just want to show you how all of the stitches are up at the top. Okay, so after we've e-wrapped, they're in the position to be able to purl easily. So leave the stitches at the top after you e-wrap a row. So leave the stitches up here, don't push them down. So we're gonna complete garter stitch rows. So you have just completed one set. That's rows one and two. Okay, so both of these together make a garter stitch. If you're not familiar with that term, we are going to finish rows Three through eight, uh, three through thirty-eight, repeating rows one and two eighteen times. So, this is in addition to these other two times. So, if you end up counting them, you're going to end up counting this many. You're going to count nineteen times across, or double that for how many actual rows you have. So, we are um, going to go on to the next one after um, I pause this video. So, when I come back, you'll see that I've already finished knitting these here. So again, push after a purl row and to get ready for the e-wrap. And after you e-wrap, don't push anything. And uh, we'll meet you back in a minute. All right, well, wonderful. We have finished our rows uh, three through 38, repeating 18 times. You're going to end after you've done an e-wrap row. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and pause and finish that part. And we're gonna move on to row 39. 39 is our buttonhole row, and so we're going to set up and put in a buttonhole, and then you will use that later on. Let me show you this diagram over here. Remember, we're working on the right side. So what we've knit so far is this is the bottom here where we cast on, and then we have knit up to this point. There's going to be a hole that we create here for our button to fit in. The button will correspond on the other side here. It will end up getting sewn in later. These two pieces will button up. We will complete a few more rows and bind these stitches off and continue this hood portion here. In the end, this gets folded together and then there is a seam that will stitch from all the way down. Basically, this is a seam that gets attached to this side here to complete our um, project. So we are going to, um, on the buttonhole row, we're going to skip the first peg, which you're familiar with. We're gonna purl one and then we'll pick our book back up in a moment. So we skip one, purl one, and now we're going to read the directions quickly, uh, well, carefully. Skip the next peg, which is this one, okay? Skip the next peg and transfer a loop from next peg to skipped peg. So they're using the word next twice, but they're referring to two different pegs. So skip the next peg is this one and then we're going to take the loop from this next peg to the skipped peg. So this is the next peg. This is the next peg after that one. So now the, one, the first next peg is called the skipped peg. So we're gonna take the next peg, go over to the skipped peg, 
and place it, transfer it over here. Okay, purl this peg, pulling the working yarn up through both loops on the peg. Okay, see where the comma break is? That means we're done with that step. So let me go do that now. Take these two loops, put your working yarn under the two loops, grab that working yarn. Basically, we're purling two together. Take both of those loops off, put the new one on, and pull that up, pull the slack out. Let's see to our, read our next step. Okay, we finished that. Place newly formed stitch onto crochet hook and chain cast on uh, same peg clockwise. Okay, so I put it back on, but I had to put it down to show you this. So we're going to put this on the crochet hook and chain cast on to the same peg uh, clockwise. And then we're going to place the loop from the hook onto the next empty peg. So we've got our loop here that we just created. We're going to put in our crochet hook. All right, so we're going to go this direction. We want to put our working strand between um, the third, uh, the second and third peg from the end and go between the uh, third and fourth peg. Grab that, pull it through, we pull it through our loop here. All right, and I managed to twist this, so let me untwist it. Okay, and now we can place this on our loom. So we're, we're done here. All right, so now we've got a loop on each peg. Okay, now our buttonhole is made and we're gonna purl across. So continue purling all the way around your loom and pause your video and we'll meet you back up. All right, I've finished my purling across. I'm finished row 39, we're on row 40 and we're gonna e-wrap knit across. So I've already pushed down my purl row Go ahead and e-wrap across. Remember going on the outside of this peg and e-wrapping that very first one and continue on. And we'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, I've completed row 40 and now we're going to do rows 41 and 42, which is repeating rows one and two from the beginning. You're going to skip and purl across for one row and then e-wrap and knit across. And then we will be done with the right side. So I'll meet you back up at the end of the right side. We have completed rows 41 and 42. We're on to the hood section and our row numbering uh, changes back to a one. And we're going to read the whole instructions for row one to find out what exactly is going on with this. And uh, then we will um, then we'll move over to actually doing it. So chain one bind off, we're going to chain down bind off 13 pegs uh, and that means we need to reference the original technique on the other page and show us exactly how to do that step by step. And then place loop from crochet hook on next peg with loop. What that means is after I'm done with all 13 of these I'm going to still have a loop on my hook and I'm going to put it on the next peg. So when we do that section, we'll kind of stop and then we'll come back to read this again. Purl this peg, pulling the working yarn up through both loops on the peg. And so we'll show you that. And then we're going to purl seven, which is P7, E wrap, knit across the 27 pegs remaining. Okay, so let's go do that. We're going to chain one, bind off 13 pegs. Chain one bind off is the process of removing the loops from the pegs of the loom and secures the stitches. So with our working yarn to the inside of the loom, we're going to insert our crochet hook into the loop on the last peg worked, which is um, bottom from top, which is this last peg here. And so we're going to insert our hook in there and we're going to lift it off of the peg. See, they're showing it lifted off here. And then we're going to chain one, which is just taking the yarn and wrapping it around our crochet hook like that and then we're going to pull it on through okay which is similar to what we did when we originally cast it on insert the hook in the loop on the next peg from the bottom to the top and lift it off the peg and pull it through the loop on the hook so with the loop that we just created after doing this 
we will then take this loop off and then pull it on through. We won't chain anything. Okay, so let's do that right now. So we're gonna pull this off. This is the first peg we're working with. I'm gonna take our working yarn, wrap it around, and pull through. That's just gonna get one chain. Okay, and so we're gonna pick up the loop on this peg here, put it on our crochet hook, and then we're gonna pull this on through. Okay. So now that we've completed that first step, we're going to go right where we finished, which is this star here. And we're gonna chain one, and then insert the hook into the loop on the next peg and then lift that from bottom to top. So always lifting from bottom to top. So after we've completed that whole setup, this is the part that we repeat uh, until we get all 13 pegs taken off and done the chain and everything. So now we're gonna chain one. All right, chain one. And then grab the next loop and put it on our hook. I'm having to do this because this yarn was splitting on me. It's, I love this yarn, but um, I found I had to use my hook on it. So now we've pulled those on through and we are ready for the next one. We're going to chain and pull that through and lift the next one. Okay, pull it through and chain. And then grab the next one. So continue until you've got all 13 that you've completed and I'll meet you back in a minute. Okay, I'm going to my 13th one and I'm gonna pull this one off. I've already chained it. Okay, and so that completes it. So the instructions had told us to put this last one on the very next peg, okay? So you're gonna have um, all this one row here, an end peg, and then the first peg here. And so you will have already bound off those stitches here. So let's move on to the next instructions. Okay, so we're gonna purl this peg by pulling the working yarn up through both loops on the peg. Then we're gonna purl seven. Okay, we've got both loops pulling and making one loop. So we're purling two together. Take that loop off and put the new one back on. And now we're gonna do this one. Okay, so this is purling seven. That's one. This is two. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you can actually put a stitch marker here because you're going to need to remember where this spot is. So the pattern doesn't call for stitch marker, but I think it's handy to have, so it's not necessary, but let's go ahead and put one on if you have one. Okay, so we're gonna continue on, and now we have uh, purled seven, and we're going to e-wrap across the remaining 27 pegs, so let's do that. Pause your video, and I'll meet you back at the end. All right, so we have finished row one. We're gonna go on to row two, which is E-wrap across. So let's go ahead and do that and meet you back at the end.
Okay, so we have finished row two and we're gonna move on to row three, which is skip peg one. And then we're gonna purl seven, just as we did before on this uh, first row. And that is gonna be the band of our, um, of our hood. So the band is gonna fall uh, right here. Okay, it's gonna go right along this edge here and then it will stop and then we'll um, increase again on the right side, uh, on the left side actually. So we're gonna purl seven and then E-wrap knit across. So let's go ahead and do that. Skip the first peg, purl this peg here. One, two, and then if you've put in a stitch marker, you'll be able to see where you stop. It's three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and then E-wrap across, and I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, you've completed a row three, and we are now going to uh, repeat rows two and three 47 times. Just as the repeats were above at 18, we're gonna do the same thing 47. So you're gonna have an E-wrap knit across the entire uh, length here the entire row and then when you come back you just purl a little bit and then e-wrap again so go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back at the end of your 97 rows okay so now we have um, finished our rows 4 through 97 and repeated what I want you to do is take a moment and stop what you're doing and we're going to refer over to this chart now it doesn't say it on here however let's let's look at this diagram here Okay, so we have the right side, which measures seven inches. And um, you can go ahead and measure those. Chances are it's, it's going to uh, measure out correctly. Now for the yarn that I used, um, mine did this area at seven inches. However, the um, repeats that I was supposed to do for the hood did not work out to be this 24 inches here. Do you see these dots here? This is representing the length of the hood. This overall number here represents the overall of everything together so don't be deceived by looking at that for this so it's over here 24 inches and I'll convert if you have to for the metric system and then um, you'll continue on and make the left side so before moving on uh, my stitches ended up probably about right here so I was able to get about this length so I had to make about I got to 20 inches and I had to do about four more inches so what I did is I took my measuring tool and I measured out and said, okay, this is how many stitches I need to do and how many more rows in order to get the 24 inches. So I didn't actually do a gauge swatch on this one, but um, the way this diagram is, it allows me to just measure as I go. So I'm going to show you um, that the beginning one is seven. Let's flip this down here. And you can see that this right side stops here and uh, ends here. So this is the beginning. And this is where it stops. So when you measure out, you're going to go from the bottom and go all the way up until it hits seven. Okay. And then when you want to measure this area, you're going to start here and then move all the way up uh, to your loom. So what I tend to do is I'll pull out the link that I need and then I'll stick it inside my loom until it hits where I want it to be and pull it down. And then I'll say, okay, about the top or the back of this is where um, I'm currently at. So earlier I was at 20. And so my tape hit about here when it was in the back. So it went all the way down to here when I measured. So now um, I have actually, I want you to go ahead and pause the video if you need to come back and finish out those. But after I knitted the extra length um, is where the point I am now. So I'm going to move on. I do want to show you where I tied on my strand. I had to have another ball added. And so I just tied it on and then I'm going to weave this in later. Uh, tied it on with a secure knot. 
Um, this is not addressed in the pattern, so I'm not going over that technique, but you can just uh, simply tie that on and weave it in later, and that's a simple solution. There are other solutions as well. We're not going over those today. Okay, so pause your video, um, pause your video and come back uh, when you are ready to move on. Okay, we're ready to work on our left side. And row one, our numbers are, um, they're renumbered now for the different sections. So row one is E-wrap and knit across. And then we're going to place the loop from the last peg onto the crochet hook and chain cast on 13 pegs counterclockwise. Place the loop uh, from the hook uh, on the next empty peg and then 40 pegs used. So we are going back to our original 40. So I'm going to put the book down. We're going to E-wrap across and I will um, meet you back in a moment when we go to chain cast on. Okay, I've flipped my loom around. We're on the other side. I'm gonna pick up this loop and put on my crochet hook. We're gonna go around this peg here, our last one, and do our chain cast on. And what I've done is I already put my stitch marker that was on this peg over here and I've moved it to peg 40. And when I get to peg 40, I'll know when to stop. We're at 39 and then 40. Okay, so now we're going to skip one purl across and then E wrap knit across. So row two, skip one purl across as usual. Row three, E wrap, uh, e -wrap and knit across as usual. So we're going to um, do those two repeats and then repeat it 20 times. So um, rather than coming back and forth here, I'm going to go ahead and say, do this section 21 times. So you're gonna have 21 repeats of this garter stitch. And then we'll come back when we're gonna do the chain one bind off across. Pull your row and E-wrap a row. Remember on the E-wrap. Wonderful, row. you have worked rows two through 43. And now we're going to work a chain one bind off across. Okay, we're gonna pick this uh, loop off and put our hook in. And we're going to chain one. And now we're going to take this loop off on the next peg, put it on, and pull it through. All right. And now we're going to uh, continue. We'll, we'll chain one and then pick up the next loop and put it on our hook from the bottom of the loop to the top of the loop. Okay. And then pull that on through and continue chain one and then put that on there pull it through and continue so I'll meet you back at the back at the last stitch okay I had removed the last loop from the loom and then knitted uh, or crocheted off that last one I didn't actually chain yet and so what we're going to do is take our working strand to finish this off and I'm going to wrap it around and chain okay and then we're going to cut it and pull this through and just go ahead and pull that on through and you are done with your piece and now we're going to sew this together. All right, we are ready to do the finishing. Before I go on, I want to mention you can go ahead at this point and easily finish weaving in your uh, tails and ends and things like that. I did use um, a little over two balls. So I had three balls and I had to do about 12 more um, ridges or actually 12 more rows and then my bind off. So. Um, just make sure that you have plenty of yarn and I'm going to point out we have a tapestry needle here and that's what I use to weave that in go ahead and pull off a lot of your uh, extra yarn here I cut a separate yarn about 
four yards long. I'm sure I won't need that much, but I'm just doing it anyway. And we're going to use our diagram as a guide and fold the piece in half with the wrong sides together. Usually it's the right sides together. And we're going to use this center fold as our guide, fold it in half, and we're going to be working along half of this length here. Okay, so it's half of this 38. And this end is going to get seamed to this end here and make the back of our hood. And then after that, um, we are going to sew the button on uh, the left side corresponding with the buttonhole. So um, now the way that the instructions are in this figure 27, page 94, you can do it. But I'm actually going to show you an alternate. Um, I think actually Kathy Norris, who designed this, um, actually probably did it this way. But the instructions are for general weaving instructions um, with it weaving on the right side of the yarn. So uh, or the right side of the work. So I'm going to show you this other alternate. It's going to be much faster. Let's get started. Okay, so I found an easier way is when you have all these outward bumps here because of e-wrapping that in stitch every time. Um, those bumps are going to be easier to join and they look really seamless when we do it this way. So we're going to go ahead and connect these two uh, panels here in the bottom and leave a tail at the end. And I'm laying it instead of, um, I'm having the two right sides face up instead of having the, um, the sides face together. And um, that way you can see it against my white table here. And you can see me line up these rows. I think it's easier to tell. So um, this is my cast on edge. And then I have this first row here. And I want to line up these bumps. So I'm going to find the bump for this outward bump here. Okay, for this first row. And at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and grab this outward bump here on this row. Okay. And I'm just going to pull through at the same time. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the next row. So this is row two here. So we're going to find the outward bump on row two, which actually uh, finds its way up here and over here on this side because you want these to line up because when it gets up to the part where the hood starts uh, you want to make sure all your ridges are completely lined up because it would just look odd if it was off all right, so the next one has this outward bump here. It's kind of falling to the back a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to find the next one for this row on the left side. If you're left-handed, just do it the opposite way. And we're going to go to the fourth one, which I have to be careful because I tried to grab half between the fourth and the fifth one, so I need to make sure that I'm grabbing the right one. And then we want to go to this row here. Okay, we went up one. And so you're just going to continue and make sure you're uh, pulling in from the right stitch as you go. Got to grab this one over here. So just continue to go through. And if it doesn't um, look quite right, just start pulling it out. So just after you get gone and done like six rows or so, like make sure that it's all lining up for you. And uh, I mean, if it's not blocked, that's one thing. So just kind of count the rows here. And so I'll meet you back when we get up a little further and we'll check on our progress. Pause your video and we'll meet you back in a minute. Okay, so as I'm going about this E-Wrap part, I uh, want to show you that it does follow uh, going in between the bars, just like uh, our book does. And so we're going to take uh, the right side uh, pull these apart and you see these bars in between and so we're going to go up and under this bar here and then I'm going to do a little cheat here and I'm just going to leave my needle in 
and go all the way over to my left and pick up the next bar. Um, and you can tell which one you just went through by kind of pulling on it. So I'm going to go right up one more bar. And then I'm going to go back over to the right. And before I actually pull through, I'm going to go ahead and do two more. So I'm going to go through this right bar and then the next bar on the left and get a couple stitches on. In fact, I think I did six last time. So I'm going to do that again. And then there's another bar. And I always remember that um, I finished on the left so I can go to the right. So I'm going to pull these through. And I'm doing six stitches at a time so it makes it go faster. Okay, leave some slack. Okay, so see how it just seamed that right on up? And um, you know, you can pull them apart just to make sure you've got your enough slack and then go to the next stitch. So pull it apart, go to the next bar. Pull that apart. Next bar. And just continue until we get to the very, very top. Okay, we're coming up to the end here. We've got just a couple of finger um, widths left here. And we're just going to continue alternating back and forth. Make sure to um, be loose enough to go back and forth between these stitches here and if you can only do a few at a time that's okay I, that's why I like this um, metal needle instead of using the plastic tapestry needles I'm using the metal needle uh, for this so that I don't break it because I tend to do that <laughs> so uh, go back and keep continuing continue to go back and forth um, I'm just um, I think I'm coming to the end of where I can I'm sorry I'm off camera I think I'm getting right to the end of where I'll be able to do several at a time there's not really a definitive um, end it's just supposed to be right about in the center so well it's supposed to be in the center You're really going to have to pull your stitches out to see them as it gets close to the end here. That's what I'm having trouble doing. And uh, but I believe what we're doing is we're going to uh, go through the middle here when we're done. And uh, turn it inside out and then we'll close it off, tie it off, weave it in. Now... I don't really want to close that up and make it like super tight. So what I'm going to do is find maybe the next stitch because it's just slightly open. Maybe go through that one and then I'm going to take like another one and go down. Okay, I'm going to put my hand in here and kind of put it down through the middle here and flip it inside out. Alright, so this is making a nice point. It's not uh, it's not too sharp. It's actually very soft. There's nothing uh, making it um, standing out, but it looks um, like it's the ending point. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back inside out again. You can see the seam that I've been creating, but no one's seeing that uh, as far as from the outside when you're wearing it. And I want you to go through uh, this last loop here and do a few more and if you're more comfortable tying it off then you can do that um, I'm I'm doing a loose um, weaving in instead of actually tying a hard knot because 
um, I don't want any hard places in here. Okay, so you can kind of loop back over your um, when you're pulling these through, you know, and kind of cinch them in that way. So I'm sort of making in a whip stitch, but then coming through this loop at the end, and it um, really locks it off. Okay, so after you get several stitches in, then go ahead and trim your yarn. Okay, and you can leave a tail, and then we're gonna flip it out and you will see the finished. All right, so this is the finished outside. Here is your band. And now we've got our, um, our sides together here that need to be um, put the buttonhole on. Now our buttonhole is on the right side that we did originally, and it's just a couple of um, it's just a couple of rows down. And if you pull it apart, you can see it's got one, two, three columns over. So you can do the same thing over here. You can um, go one, two, three columns over and two columns down, and put this through here. Um, this is just an accent piece of uh, yarn so that I can see it. And then go ahead and line them up too. You can take a crochet hook and uh, put it through this buttonhole and kind of check. So once we have these lined up, you can put that through and double check that you've got it in the right spot, which it is. I've, of course, I checked this earlier. So uh, now that we know that that's gonna be, we don't need the buttonhole side anymore, but we need this side here. And uh, now we're just going to put in our, uh, with our tapestry needle, we're gonna put in our button on, we're gonna sew this in on the left side. So go ahead and do that. Pick out your button. I've got a couple of buttons here. And then um, make sure that you've got one that's gonna go through and uh, be able to button and hold it without coming un undone. Okay, so say like this one is going to be um, probably just fine because I've got a lot of give, so it's a large button, but it can handle going through uh, the buttonhole. Okay, whereas this one might be too small where um, it will um, it will just come undone. So this button is probably um, an inch and a half. All right, so sew that on and I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, and so now we have where our button is and go through our buttonhole and that will um, button that up for us. And there is our hood and I'll put it on the mannequin for you to see. I hope that you've enjoyed this series of loom knitting patterns and how to read them provided to you by Leisure Arts. This has been the Big Book of Loom Knitting by Kathy Norris and this is the hooded wrap. Again, thank you again for tuning in to Good Knit Kisses. We hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day and happy looming. Bye-bye.